Joining us now from Washington is Duncan Wood, director of the Wilson Center Mexico Institute. Good morning and thanks for your time. Good morning. Tell us a little bit about this extradition process and how long that might take, but why it's important for the United States to get him there. Yeah, we have to remember that, uh, you know, Mexico, uh, kind of like the United States, is a highly legalistic country. Um, there are several steps in the extradition process. The government has begun the process by issuing the order that uh, the legal system has to start looking into how to proceed with this. It'll need to get a ruling by a judge. It'll then need to be a statement by the government. And then they begin to negotiate with the United States about how that happens. Now, along the way, the lawyers representing El Chapo can put in place injunctions that will slow the process down. And so there are wildly varying estimates of how long this could take, from a matter of a couple of weeks to several months to some people saying that it may not even be resolved before the end of this year. That means that, uh, you know, even though he is going to be extradited to the United States eventually, he has a year probably, or up to a year, in a Mexican jail. Um, so the Mexican authorities are going to have to be really careful about where they keep him this time. Yeah, no kidding, because he's back in the same jail, you know, from which he escaped. What, and, and I guess that's the question on a lot of people's mind is if they couldn't keep him behind bars before, what's to say that he, with this extradition process, however long it takes, just gives him more time to, to, to escape again? Yeah, I mean, the guy has enormous resources. The Sinaloa cartel is a multi-billion dollar business. Um, there's no doubt that they have access to the blueprints of pretty much every Mexican prison. So where the authorities eventually decided to put him was kind of irrelevant because there's no place that's ultimately going to be 100% safe. Um, last time, of course, El Chapo was able to bribe and intimidate uh, people within the prison system to help him to escape. Um, and, of course, we have all those great stories about how members of the Sinaloa cartel were actually sent to, uh, to Germany to learn how to build the right kind of tunnel to help him to escape. So this time around, let's just hope that the Mexican authorities don't put him in a ground floor cell. Yeah, well, and we're watching for that for sure. Let me ask you about the Sean Penn part to this. He does this interview and, you know, authorities say, yeah, absolutely, some of um, that information helped them track him down, although kind of a missed attempt in the beginning, but obviously, and we've seen the video that got him this time. What, you know, there are calls that Sean Penn should, should have some kind of penalty against him. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not a lawyer, of course, but uh, the way I see it is that, uh, in fact, Sean Penn was following up on a golden opportunity. He was approached by Miss Del Castillo, who had been approached by El Chapo's people. And uh, Hollywood at the time was uh, desperately trying to make contact with El Chapo to make some kind of story of his life. Sean Penn finds this landing in his lap. And I don't know any journalist in the world who would have turned down that opportunity. Mm. So first of all, we have to say that you can't really blame him. Second of all, what did he actually do wrong? He met with a known criminal, but he didn't aid and abet them. I would imagine that the most important thing right now is basically a debriefing to learn what he saw when he was up there in that meeting. Meeting, who was present, where the meeting took place, and really, you know, what was the interaction with Mexican military along the roads? Because there was one report in that, uh, uh, in that uh, uh, Rolling Stone article that said yeah. that the Mexican military recognized Ch uh, Guzman's son and let them through. Wow, so much still to be told on this story. Thank you kindly for joining us. My pleasure.